So, the weather's 50-50 for this weekend's big charity picnic out on the island. Yeah, Tom, well, there's definitely a chance of some thunder shower activity, and the tornado watch is still in effect until 12 o'clock. So keep watching for those tornadoes until 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, yeah, sure, we'll do All that. Right. But, Bill, listen, tell me, when are we going to get some of that good weather you promised us? <laughs> well, next weekend looks good, Nina, but I'm not promising anything. I'm not God. <laughs> oh, not God. <laughs> not God. Well, thanks for letting us know. Okay. <laughs> That's all for Channel 7 News. For Tom Slater and God, Phil the Shell. I'm Nina Spudniak. Stay tuned for Kids in the Hall coming up next. Got here. It's a real mess, Doc. Severe internal bleeding, kidney damage. What I'm most worried about is this cranial laceration. <laughs> Doctor, we just got the x-rays back. Who's responsible for this IV? It was me. I put it in, but it it was solid. It's true, Doctor. I saw him do it. Maybe the patient moved. Yeah, he looks real lively, doesn't he? Look, I'm not going to stand for this kind of sloppiness on my shift. Is that understood? Yes. Yes, Doctor. All right. Now look at this. There may be some spinal damage. Which <laughs> He's gone flatline. We're losing him. Let's zap him. Charge me up. <laughs> Clear. <laughs> There's water all over the floor. Charge me up again. He's gone. Time of death is 6.32 p.m. Who ordered 10 pizzas? Get those pizzas out of here. <coughs> Someone's gonna have to pay for it. <laughs> Why would I order 10 Hi, Scott. Hi there. I'm Donovan. Oh, uh, hi, Donovan. And? Well, I'm responding to your ad. My ad? What ad? Yeah. This one. Gay white male. Uh-huh. With own television show. Yes. Seeks an uncommonly beautiful stud, whom he could never have if it weren't for the fact he's a TV star. <laughs> for discreet evening encounters. <laughs> well, that sounds like me. But, uh, Donovan, I don't think this is the time or the place. Why not? Look, in, in real life, you could never have me, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's sadly true. Well, think of me as a perk. Oh, like baseball tickets. I am uncommonly beautiful, aren't oh, I? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> it is evening. Yes, it is, but it's hardly discreet. Donovan, we're on television. I know that. 
Oh, what's wrong, stud? Is a great gay hero afraid of what people will say? No, I'm not. It's just that, well, I, I, I'm in the next scene. So you see. miss it. Hmm? Look, hmm? I'm going to go wait in your dressing room. I'm going to give you five minutes. You can talk the talk. Let's see if you can walk the walk. <laughs> <sighs> Thrills gum. <laughs> God, I, I'd really love to help him out in his goal to fuck a celebrity, but... <laughs> I don't know, I mean... I have... I have a responsibility to my troop and... Oh, uh, by the way, Scotty, did I mention I'm straight? Go to a commercial. Wonderful looking turkey, Mrs. Ketchell. 20 pounder. We had a 17 pounder once and there was a fight. 20 pounder. I get the neck. Yes, Mr. Ketchell. Of course you do, dear. The neck is mine. I mean, why else would I work like a rat all year? Do you think you're big enough to take the neck from your old man? No, father. Oh, you two are always kidding. I'll tell you what I'm going to do as the head of this household. I'm going to eat this son of a bitch. And I'm going to wash the pecker down with gravy. Is there anybody here that has it in their head to stop me? Good. Then watch me go. Mm-hmm, yeah. Myra, you beautiful thing. When I look at you, all I can think about is the 27 beautiful years we've had together. You've mothered two lovely children, one of whom is still speaking to us. When I look at you, I don't see a 60-year-old housewife. I see that beautiful barefoot 13-year-old I married. I want you to have the neck. Oh, gosh. Oh, shut up. Oh, gosh. It's stuck. Here, wash it down with gravy. She's turning blue. <laughs> Who here took that free first aid course? The one that only takes a couple of hours and you can save someone's life with it. Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. I'm floating without my earthly trappings. I must be having one of those out of body experiences I've read about. Ooh. Oh, look how filthy my dining room looks from up here. Look how dusty that lamp is. Oh. Oh. So, no one knows what to do? Don't do anything! But shouldn't we try and dislodge the turkey neck? No! Don't do anything until a trained professional gets here. <laughs> oh, I feel like a schoolgirl. I think we should take her shoes off and oil her feet. No! Don't do anything until a trained professional gets here. Okay, I'll, I'll call one. No! Don't touch that phone! Don't do anything until a trained professional gets here. Is anybody listening to me? Oh, my. I never noticed how big Grayson's bald spot was getting before. Hello, Myra. Iris, what are you doing up here? Having an out-of-body experience. Oh, what did you do, love? Error in judgment. Fridge fell on me. Oh. And, of course, now none of the family knows what to do. Oh, I'll be right over. Good thing I didn't float to the great beyond. Well, no rest for the wicked. Grayson, you're going bald. Mom, you're alive. Yes, and I've got a lot of cleaning up to do. 
First I've got to go over to Iris's and take the fridge off her. Then I gotta dust this whole place. Oh, no rest for the wicked. Great, still some meat on. Well, let's tuck in. I mean, he's a nice enough kid. It's just that they, they let him run their lives. I mean, they only eat what he wants to eat. They only watch the TV shows he wants to watch. I mean, my God, he's only five years old. Promise me, John, if we ever have children, we won't coddle. Coddling is for eggs, not for children. John? Jo John? John, is something wrong? Who are you? <laughs> Where am I? Who am I, for that matter? John, don't do this. I can't seem to remember anything. John, I am warning you. The last thing I remember is going to the bathroom, nothing else. I must have amnesia. John? Yes, of course, amnesia. There's no other explanation. John! I'm sorry, do I know you, stranger? You know damn well I'm your wife. So says you! Look, let me propose this, stranger. I go away for a while, hang around some loose women, live life to its fullest, and one day if my memory comes back, maybe I'll return. Besides, the last thing you need right now is to take care of an emotional invalid. You have your own life, whoever you are. John, if you don't get into bed this minute, I'm going to get a baseball bat and thrash you to within an inch of your life. Memories pulsing back. <laughs> My life returning. Well, good night, dear. I can't sleep. Oh. Why not? How do I know that I won't be dead when I wake up? What? How do I know that I won't die in my sleep? Believe me, you won't. So says you! Look, I have an idea. Why don't I go away for a while, hang around some loose women, live life to its fullest, and one day, if the fear goes away, maybe I'll even return. Fear receding. Life returning to normal. Good night, dear. Good night, stranger. John. Night, honey. Mm -hmm. You were saying? My new film is a very important film, right? Because the world today, I mean, it's a dark and shrouded place, you know, pessimistic. And film is light. But I say if the film upon the screen is dark, then where's the light? What's the name of your film? Sex Girl Patrol. Sex Girl Patrol. The title is very sexist. I right, thank you. It's a very sexist film, yes. What's the film about? Right, good question. At the dawn of the third millennium, right, the forces of sex negativity, right, continue to dominate the planet Earth. Now, war and the bloodshed and the sexual frustration is everywhere. So for this reason, the Grand Council of Hot Love, you know, up in space, decide to dispatch three of their finest love commandos, the be Monique and Trudy and Ginger, to seek out hate and the evil and Sexy problems, eh? Now, aided only by sex boy, without whose sex nourishment their sexual energy is incomplete and relying only on their ability to generate extreme sexual horniness in absolutely everybody, this sex girl patrol is out to save the planet. Sex girl patrol. They're in control. Body and soul, they're in control. Sex Girl Patrol. Sex Girl Patrol, yeah. With Sex Boy. Mm -hmm. 
Good work, Monique. They are sexing very well. Yes, Ginger. Their passion wasn't lost, only hidden. And what of the grandfather? He is upstairs having sex. On the bed? No, on the phone. Well done, Ginger. Ah. Listen, even the dogs are panting with passion. Mm -hmm. And yet, Dusseldorf is such an unfunny town. Yes, but once we make more sex here, um, it'll be a different place. Ginger, Monique, someone has kidnapped Sex Boy. Sex Boy? Kidnapped? But who? The world must come to go. Yet, as surely as those body parts which have sinned against him will fall off to the ground and burst into flames, the world will come to God. But it can't come to God without your financial contribution. So please give generously. God bless you. Cut and clear. For when they do come to God, all stupid and timid and horny, then only I will be able to give them satisfaction. Uh, do I hear an amen? Sex boy. Mm. Could I have just one hand free? How much trouble could I get into with just one hand? <sighs> the computer is almost programmed. And the nude is almost ready. This came. A video cassette? Yes. Why? From where? From whom? I don't know. I'm almost scared to play it. they drown kittens. Bad sex has made them nervous, unwilling to think. So this is the famous sex girl patrol. Somehow I thought you'd be taller. We're tall enough. Where is sex boy? Stop it! <laughs> Let's just say that sex boy is somewhere on the other side of our big sticks. Okay, girls, I think it's time for the, the deadly sex look.
Tech Scrub Patrol. Sex Boy dies. Look. The caveman? But you've been frozen in ice for a million years. You can't be alive. I'm a little confused. Where does the caveman come from? I just have to ask. Asking, asking, asking. Always multitasking. You're just like the studio. That caveman is the one thing I fought for. Watch the film. Why don't you give yourself a chance to enjoy?